morning, more Medic One. Uh, today, Sunday, and uh, today we're going to be uh, doing a bolt by bolt teardown of a five horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. I'll give you a little history on this one if I can. Uh, this one is actually a 135200 with a spec of 01000. And the code is a 1967 model, so it's pretty old. Uh, we'll start from the top and work our way down. And uh, there won't be a single bolt left in it when we're done. But uh, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is remove the blower shroud. There's three screws. Some of the newer engines have two screws on top. So just remove this one up here. There's one on the side right here, and there's one on the side right there. Once you get the blower shroud off, you'll notice that it's got a little apparatus on here called the starter. It basically houses a rewind spring, and when you pull it, it uh, starts turning the star-shaped uh, fixture inside the starter cup or the starter uh, disc or rotor if you want to call it one and it engages into this ratchet assembly right here and when you pull it this is a one-way bearing it starts the motor and when the engine starts this stays stationary the balls sling out and uh, it's good to go and a lot of times uh, these will go to squealing really loud and you have to replace it but anyway, next step we're going to do is we're going to remove the ignition module. It's a 5 16ths or an 8 millimeter here and here. Go ahead and remove your chopper screen. This uh, basically, whenever this engine is running, the uh, flywheel creates a uh, vortex and it sucks air through the blower shroud to cool the engine as this is an air cooled motor. Uh, this breaks up heavy debris and chops it up so it'll go past the fins and go through instead of getting stopped up in there. But uh, it's a quarter inch. Take these off. And we'll get to, uh, we'll take the starter clutch off next. Go ahead and remove your starter clutch. It just unscrews from the crank. Slide it off. Uh, you'll see that the crankshaft is actually long here. It's actually a bearing surface to ride on the inside of this to help support the clutch. Go ahead and remove the flywheel. Uh, I'll post uh, uh, how to remove small engine flywheels in, in the description below. But uh, go ahead and pull the flywheel off and uh, we'll get to the points and condenser behind the flywheel. Remove the points condenser cover quarter inch remove the bolt securing the uh, oh, I can't get it one handed but uh, remove this bolt and this bolt and we'll take the points and condenser out here's the uh, condenser set out uh, here's your coil <clears throat> if you are working on an older engine like this that does have points and condensers uh, the uh, coil that you can get to replace this one does away with your points of condensers. Uh, don't buy the little thing that clips onto this coil. It, uh, it works, but this coil is 40 something years old. Don't even try. Just buy a coil for a 135202 with any spec and uh, it's electronic and put it on there and it'll fire every time uh, the only thing you want to do is be sure the flywheel key is good uh, on the magnetron ignition and well of course the points condenser ignition next step is to remove the air filter remove the bell crank for the governor arm on the carburetor lift it out of the way and unhook it from your linkages Go ahead and remove your muffler. It's 7 16th bolts. Uh, some engines may have uh, 
just a screw-in type hot dog muffler. You can see the cutout for the gas tank where it would be. Uh, if that's the case, then you would just unscrew it with a pipe wrench. My wife just brought me a cup of coffee. I love her to death. Mm -mm -mm. Good cup of coffee, Mom. Anyway, next step, you want to uh, remove the carburetor mounting bolts. They're 7 sixteenths. And if you look, they are, uh, they got a flat for a uh, special tool. Uh, I don't have that special tool. I've never had to have it, but uh, you can just take a screwdriver and go in there and take those out. Once you get your carburetor screws out, and there's one more screw down here on the bottom of the gas tank at 7 sixteenths. Just go ahead and take it out. And then your whole gas tank and carburetor will just come away from it just like that. Go ahead and remove your PCV valve. Wow, look at all the rust in the rocker chamber or the push rod chamber. I'll post a link down below how to take the valves out of a small engine. But uh, the next step you want to do is remove the spark plug. Go ahead and remove the air dam or air baffle on the block here. It's just one screw quarter inch. And now remove all your cylinder head bolts. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and uh, drain the oil into a suitable container. Wow. Glug, glug, glug. A lot of water. I think this motor has been underwater. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and remove your uh, oil pan bolts or your engine sump bolts. Uh, they're 7 16 head. Some of the newer engines are 3 8 head. Once you get the oil pan off, uh, go ahead and rotate your engine and line up your timing marks. Uh, if not, <clears throat> it might be a little hard to get the camshaft out because uh, it may not be on the base circle. But just go ahead and lift your cam out. And remove your valve lifters or tappets. The job of the camshaft is to uh, time the engine for the valves that open and close. As you can tell, this, there's an exhaust and an intake lifter or a lobe, and uh, the tappet rides on the uh, cam lobe, and as the cam turns and these lobes jump up and down, uh, basically tells the uh, when the valves to open. Go ahead and rotate your crank down. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a specific position, just where you can get in here and get your rod cap bolts out. Go ahead and remove those. Rod caps off. I want you to rotate the engine up as far as it will go. Top dead center. And then immediately rotate it back down. It'll clear the uh, connecting rod and then uh, you can pull the crank right out of there if it's not rusted yeah, that's what it is. give it a little bit of a tap but don't mar it up This is your crankshaft. Uh, your connecting rod bolts to the journal here, and when the engine turns, it's kind of like a, it's sort of like a camshaft. It oscillates up and down, and uh, whenever the engine fires, and this crankshaft's at a certain position, when the piston fires, it forces this around 
to make your four cycles of your engine. So you can see the connecting rod, just take your finger and go ahead and push it up on it and we'll remove the piston out of the top of the block. And this is your piston and connecting rod assembly. Uh, basically there's a clip right here that you're going to want to remove. Get the keeper out of the, the wrist pin out and then you can just push the uh, wrist pin up out of the way all the way through and that will separate your connecting rod from your piston. So basically that is it. Um, there's one other screw that holds the governor arm on but uh, nine times out of ten you won't have to take that off. But uh, that's it there ain't nothing left you can take the valves out if you want to but uh, like I said I'll post a link in the description below how to take the valves out but other than that it's not that very many bolts and very 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 few, too, few tools that you gotta have to completely tear apart a Briggs & Stratton engine 7 16 in wrench a ratchet with a 7 16 and a 3 8 pair of needle nose and you can work on one of these small engines fairly easy but uh, no special tools required just y'all can uh, wrench on and y'all have a great weekend if you have any questions about Briggs and Stratton engines let me know y'all have a great day more medic one